Welcome back to Gold Derby. I'm Christopher Rosen. I'm so pleased to be joined by Michael Mann, a four-time Oscar nominee, two-time Emmy Award winner, and he's the executive producer of the HBO Max series Tokyo Vice, and also directed the show's incredibly compelling and great pilot. Thank you, Michael, for doing this. I really appreciate it. No, my pleasure. It's great to be here. So I, I interviewed JT Rogers and Ansel Elgort, and they both talked about how you would set the tone for the entire series with the, with the way you directed the pilot. So I wanted to ask you, like, what was what did you see as the tone that needed to be set with this show? And how did you go about that with your, with the pilot episode? Well, you know, you start with kind of, you start with a blank canvas. There's, there's the script now, there's the physical world and all the people in it. And, um, uh, and, and that is going to become, uh, you know, created and built into the very small world of this is what the show is, and one wants to wants it to have a real signature and an identity all of all its own. So there's many Tokyo's if you like. There's also the prospect of shooting Tokyo and Osaka, which is a lot easier than shooting Tokyo in Tokyo, you know. But we wanted to do, you know, I wanted to do Tokyo in Tokyo, and then and then have this. Um, you know this immersion into into um, in, 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 into Jake's life, so that we're him and his shoes, seeing through his eyes, as somebody who's been here for four years and is seeking the impossible, which is to become a reporter on a, the first Western reporter on a Japan on a Japanese newspaper in a very very different culture. So it. It becomes it becomes uh, the the to, the totality of everything. Uh, we look at the complexity of your own life, for example. So it's uh, the neighborhood he's living in, and uh, I like the low rise quality of Akabane, where we found found his house. That kind of, you know that neighborhood. Who are the other who are the other characters? Which gets into casting, and that becomes very much of an. Un, of an ensemble, not so much in terms of actors working with each other, but and this is the group of people who occupy the universe of Tokyo Vice. And um, in addition to Ken Watanabe and, and Ansel, there's, you know, uh, 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 Rinko Kukuchi, you know, uh, Elo, Elo Rumpf, uh, Kazuka Tanabe, Shun, uh, Shun Sagata, uh, Sho, who's a fantastic actor. Um, and you know, so that's the composite that gets built as you're telling this, as you're telling the story, and uh, and trying to make it, a, you know, a deep dive into our narrow slice, of, but very deep core of of, of Tokyo. Um, yeah, yeah. Obviously, all of the, like I think one of the things that I really love about the show, and that I've seen just in general, the responses is how. It feels so authentic to Tokyo, to 1999, to all the different communities within the show, obviously, like journalism and the Yakuza and the police and all these things are so specific. And it's like very, obviously, like, like I said, like thought out and detailed and research. How do you, like, where do you, like, you seemingly, I, I know from seeing other interviews, with you, you're very detail oriented. Like, how do you make, how do you, like, how do you go down that rabbit hole? And like, how do you make, like, where do you, I guess, where do you know to stop when you've gotten enough research? You know what I mean? Like, how do you, cause it is so like, you're like, you're saying it's so specific and so detailed. How do you know when you're not getting like over your head, I guess. Well, you, you meet Yakuza and ex Yakuza and, you know, for example, a ceremony that the guy who was leading the ceremony is the real sake ceremony and uh, leader. He conducts these things routinely so we you know and what they meant in each uh each individual little action and it, it's it, you know one understands it. we compressed it it takes a lot longer than that but in terms of building the authenticity of of the uh of of this of this uh, very hierarchical structured uh yak is a uh, organized criminal group that that our character, who we think is a is a is a kind of neighborhood street boss, in fact, is at a very low rank, but is 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 enthralled to be included, enthralled to be there, enthralled to be part of this lar larger structure, and and as, as you have a sense of his aspiration. So it's not just about displaying a ceremony; it's his role in relationship to this hierarchy, which is revealed in in this quite grand. You know, ceremony and how we staged it. 
but it's that it's also you know the Ansel. I mean, Ansel's an incredibly, incredibly disciplined actor, and um, uh, you know, doing two, three hours of Japanese study every single day when we were in prep to the point where now he's conversationally can speak Japanese, which is not easy, and um, uh, and on also also uh, you know. Uh, we're working in, in martial arts and in understanding uh, the, the customs and the culture, and most importantly, learning how to be a reporter, really understanding what reporters do. And it sounds basic because we all see reporters, but it actually is, it's not very basic. It's what is the, what's, what is the syntactical construction of a five paragraph piece that you're writing? You know, what's the what's 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 the lead what's the nut graph what's you know so we did some uh basic reporting on on some events that happened in south central los angeles and also around in the wilshire corridor um when it involved the shooting and uh you know and and work spent time with james queely who's a crime reporter on la times as well as people in tokyo doing doing the same thing we did it in la for obvious reasons he doesn't speak Japanese, we couldn't kind of do the same immersive thing in, in Tokyo. But but the that quest for information, that wanting to score what really happened, not what they tell me happened, not just to be a human, um, you know, a human printer or a human Xerox machine, but to but to discover what really happened and and then be with, be there first with it. And then maybe if you're lucky, make a small piece of history someday. You know, that's that's the that's the impulse. And I work from the inside out. I want to know what the character, what the act, what the actor wants, what he really wants to do. And so instilling that in Ansel and, and, and Ansel working, you know, through that understanding that, you know, so if you reduce it to saying to an actor or a character, what's your action? What do you want, you know, to report? That's the that's the quintessence of, you know, who he is. And of course, that's exactly what gets frustrated. <laughs> right. I'm glad you said that because obviously I found that really fascinating. And when I interviewed Ansel, he said that too, that you guys, he like went and did like journalism boot camp basically. And I found that great because I feel like, you know, as somebody in the media, I feel, I feel like people think it's very easy to be a journalist. Right. And like, they don't even journalists, some younger journalists maybe think it's very easy to be a journalist. I was like heartened that you took it so seriously right. and that you understood like, you know, that what, what, and obviously I know you, you know, you've touched on journalism before and some of your other stuff and like insider obviously famously, but like what, what, what draws you to journalism specifically? Is it that sense of integrity that like good journalists have where they want to tell the right story and get things right? You know, I think something that's, that's completely irrelevant is what draws me to journal, <laughs> journalism reporters. And that is kind of like what, what I do as a writer and, you know, as, as I didn't write, uh, I didn't write Tokyo Vice, but right. it, it, it's kind of what I do as, as a writer when I'm writing in, and a, uh, J T Rogers did as a writer and a director. It was a quest for information. You're looking for information, and you, you know, you're you're. I'm pursuing a story, you know, so and I'm pursuing a lot of research about that subject matter before <clears throat> before I can do anything, and I'm always after first person kind of situations. I, I'm not. Uh, I don't usually derive my material from other material. I, you know, I want to. It's more exciting to me, anyway, to, you know, to to to, to, you know, to dive into a landscape and try to find it uh, in a first person kind of a way. But it's that quest for. It's the same kind of um, you know verb in the human simple sentence of, you know, the quest wanting to know. You want to know. You want to find this stuff. So there's the. I understand it. Let me put it that way. It's probably just because it's easier for me to understand. That's why I'm saying it's it's not a very meretricious. No, I, I mean I think that's good, but I I do think it also tracks with like a lot of your characters. I think have that quest, right? And they're like in in the other a lot of other stuff you've done too. Where it's like that quest for integrity. I feel like is really key and like finding out like the answers and stuff. I wanted to ask you. You mentioned before like shooting in Tokyo. I, I read an interview with Ken Watanabe, and he was like, "Oh, it was like the." I think he said it was something like the basement approach to like shooting Tokyo. It's not like the you normally see how Tokyo is shot. Can you talk a little about that? Obviously, you're so famous for shooting metropolitan cities at night. It's like a, you know, you've done it so well over and over, but not Tokyo here. So like, can you talk about like getting to do it in Tokyo and like what you kind of were looking for? 
Uh, it, 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 th 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 there's a, um, it's an approach to generally shooting in real places I have of, you know, you, you never take no for an answer. And in Tokyo, it's really put to the test because you get a lot of maybes, I think so, but maybe not, or only be, you're gonna be here for 45 minutes. And it really took a lot to, to uh, be able to shoot where we, where we shot. And we had a tremendous cooperation from uh, this brilliant woman who's, a, who's the governor of Tokyo, which means the governor's a population of 35 million people. And, and then um, we had a lot of help, but it, it's not shooting in Tokyo or, you know, you are not in Kansas. I mean, it is top down and it's also bottom up in the sense that there's, there's, if you're shooting in Shibuya, there's a whole little structure of Shibuya and you have to be talking to the political head of it, plus the, the head of the police for that one particular prefecture. And that's the way uh, that was the way it works. And there is a uh, you run up against um, a quite wonderful Japanese cultural um, tradition and value system where if, if somebody has a food stand, they've been running that food stand for 35, 40 years. They have their customers and they are not going to interrupt the flow of their customers or their customers' expectations. Like there's a couple of people who may show up exactly at 4.30. So if you want to shoot at 4.30, you can't. You get this. No, because I have my three customers are coming and no amount of money is going to change that attitude. You know, so there's um, plus the sense of the inalienable right to tranquility of um, the ability to walk down this sidewalk cannot be interrupted. So you run into, you know, a, a very, very different culture with a very, very different, quite fascinating value system. And that also made it, you know, pretty tough, but we managed, we managed to do it by being, uh, you know, persistent and, and, and innovative. You know? Yeah. I asked JT this because I'm a huge Pearl Jam fan. And I love the release needle drop in, in the uh, in the pilot episode. And then he said it was all you because you're also a big Pearl Jam fan. I guess, can you tell why release? I just thought that's such a great song, obviously. And I love the way it's used in, in that pilot episode. Jake is very much a product of the 90s. And and it, it's, it happens to be key to his to his character. This, this you know, uh, Soundgarden, Soundgarden Pearl Jam sense of 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 this extreme expression, extreme yearning for for identity, for a state of mind, for you know that that the anguish that's inherent in, in that body of music is very powerful to me, and I think it's formative for Jake. And Jake is exactly um, it, it, his his circumstances. Um, are part and parcel of that music. Jake is remaking, is making himself. He's making himself into who he wants to be. It's as if he asks himself, who shall I be in this world? And he's decided that the place where he has affinity is Japan and who he should be is a reporter. And he should be a reporter in, Jap reporter in Japan. This is, this is, you know, uh, uh, this is a guided, you know, formation of an individual. And that's a very transcendent um, motive, if you like. And the music that expresses that is, you know, Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, Audio Slave a little bit later. Yeah, yeah. no, I know. I love, that. I mean, those are all some of my favorites. I was like thrilled to, thrilled to see yeah. in there. And I feel like I was probably like a little older than Jake in 99. So I like, feel like that worked out well. Uh, you, I, I mean, you're obviously one of like the greatest film directors of all time, but you continually succeed in TV. You've done a lot, a lot of TV. Why do you like the medium, I guess, still at this point when, you know, obviously I know you're making films now, you're making uh, movie now. I think I like it because it's fast, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I like variety. And so I could work for a long time developing something and a long time shooting and editing a project. And on the other hand, um, you know, uh, you know, television is immediate, and I, you know, there's a certain thrill to, to the shorter schedule and 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 making fast decisions and and doing it. Now, having said that, we, of course, we shot for six days. On March fifteenth, we stopped because of COVID. When everybody went back to you know the states, and then we came back like seven months, seven eight months later, and picked it up. And no, I've never made a film that way where you stop and you edit. 
you know, everything together. And then you go back and shoot for another, you know, 19 days. Um, but that's, that's what we did. So it, it turned into a much longer, you know, process yeah. than anybody can imagine. So. so I was actually, this is just a personal anecdote. I'm here, I'm, I'm at a wedding and one of the guests was like, oh, I was watching the show Tokyo Vice. And I feel like I've heard it from multiple people, just people I see and I feel like anecdotally, maybe you have as well are like the show has become like a pretty solid success. I feel like the word of mouth has been really good. Obviously it was renewed for season two. Are you going to get to be involved in season two as well? Like from a directing standpoint or just EP or how is it going to work? Um, well, I think, I think if the, if the, if the show, if the show catches on for a whole number of, of, of reasons, it's the answer. Ansel, Ken Watanabe, the rest of the cast, JT Rogers writing, the, the the structure of these stories and where they where they were in season one and where they're going in season two, which is is, is very very exciting, and um, everything gonna get stand, get stood on its head, and uh, you know and so there's many things that make something catch on if they, you know, it's all it, it's from personal experience. So I, if I turn into something and it's not. Um, you know, it's taking me into a new and exciting world and it's, uh, you know, I'm there for it. And I, you know, that's what we try to do with Tokyo Vice. Yeah. And would you come, you're going to be able to direct another, another episode in the second season or what? I, I right in? now I'm tied up, it doesn't look Ferrari. like I'm tied up yeah. here on a very big yeah. project. Yeah. I'm in Italy as we're yeah. talking, I'm in Modena and I'm tied up on a very large project right now. So it's going to take me all the way through, uh, <laughs> into 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 well into 2023 wow well we'll look forward to that one and obviously tokyo yeah. vice is phenomenal success and, and michael mann it was great chatting with you thank you so right. much for this. Nice talking to you too thanks thank you. bye bye, bye.